welcome back <clears throat> so what are the uh, open subspaces in a non linear space if you know the answer you can say yes that's what the discussion for uh, last lecture yeah so i don't see lot of hands are rising okay yeah so vivek sir only trivial subspaces what is the trivial subspace means x itself ha huh. so there are two subspaces we normally say it as trivial one is the just singleton five. zero uh, yes. no no five five cannot be a yes, subspace single. yes singleton zero uh, so space containing just singleton zero are the full space so the full space is the only uh, open uh, subspace so so i'll say that uh, if y subspace subset of x if this is an open subspace then y is actually equal to x okay and we also made some extra conclusion that if you start with a closed subspace so i'll ask maybe gaurav yes yeah so if y is a, if this is a closed subspace Uh, then what we can, huh? It should be proper. Uh, no, is that what is the conclusion? Yeah, Deepan Jana. Okay, okay. Uh, huh. Sir, it yeah. will be no. Wait, wait, wait. No he hidden. is he's saying. No. Huh? Yeah. No okay. hidden. Is it fine now? Then why is no hidden? Okay. So what we have uh, quickly looked at in the yesterday discussion is that every subspace we said, but actually you need to close because the definition of nowhere dense is after taking the closure, if you take interior, it has to be uh, empty. And hence, it may be possible if you take the closure, it may not be a proper subspace; it might become a full space. Okay. Right. so that's about open and closed sets we will come back to this again now today we will want to spend a little bit uh, information about bounded sets bounded subsets in a non linear space so first of all i need to know the Uh, definition okay so i just want so how many of you know what is the definition of bounded set bounded subset remember i am saying about subset so if we are inside a non linear space remember x with the norm of course this i am treating as x with the metric which is coming from the non linear space so as a metric space what do you mean by a set is when do you say a subset of a metric space is bounded that's the question yeah uh yeah data data so, uh, when d of x comma y is bounded for all x y Ah, okay. So one definition is, so I'm writing. So for all x and y in Y. So I want to define Y subset of x is bounded. Okay. For all x and y in Y, what do you want? Distance between x and y should be 
less than m for some m belongs to natural numbers ma uh, right so this uh, m can change depending on x and y like it has to be same for i mean ha huh. This so is what is the what is the order? So I I always want it to be in that way so that you will not miss out the real issue. Okay. So what I'm saying is that so you should actually tell me there exists m positive such that that works for all x and y. So you should give me the m first before I'm saying what is x and y. Okay. So this is the definition. And uh, how many of you could uh, there is a name for this? Uh, if you take all the distances, possible distances between x and y, when x and y are varying over a, you have a name for this. Okay, Gauro. Uh, yes, sir. Ah, uh, what is that called? So I didn't remember. You don't remember? Okay. Yes. So I'll clear it up. How many of you remember this? If you, yeah, Neha. Sir, uh, diameter. Yes. So diameter of the set. So it is same as saying that. So there exists m positive such that for all x and y, instead of saying this, I will just say that the diameter of it is less than. M. So what is the definition of diameter? What is the diameter of A? It's actually look at all possible distances, okay, and take the supremum where x and y are from. So this is the definition. So think of the picture in the background. So you have some subset. This is A. And you look at all possible distances. This is the distance. So you are taking supremum for all such distances, and that you call it as the diameter. So probably this, this may be the diameter. Okay. So this you want the diameter has to be less than m. So that's the definition. Okay. Good. Now I make another statement. Uh, since I am inside. Uh, note that in this definition, there is no way of uh, there is nothing which is connected to uh, vector space structure. A subset of X. I am using only the distance between X and Y. But now I am converting. Uh, I am writing another definition and see that whether this makes sense. Okay. So there exists X. From the space X, okay, and there exists a R positive. See, all that I'm saying is that I want to say that this A set A is bounded. If I can put this inside a ball, is the point clear? So I all I'm saying is that there is a point X. Maybe I'll use some other card. So I'm saying that there is a point X, and there is a radius R. And I can put this inside this. Okay, is it clear? So this is what I mean. The center is not proper, of course, but uh, bear with it. So maybe it's the center. So this is B X R. So I am saying that the definition is. Uh, so there exists an X, which is the center, and there is a radius R. Such that this B X R should contain my A. So this is. I want to say that A is a bounded set. If I can find out such a center and a radius, such that my A is sitting inside this ball. So how many of you think it is? This is also saying the boundedness. Of the subject here. Okay, most of you are accepting, but can you also see the proof? That means what you need to show. If I give you uh, 
if i give you the first definition like this diameter that means there is an m which is who has diameter is less than m and if i want to say that from that definition i can get this definition you have to tell me what is the x and what is the r so how many of you could say that what is the x and what is the r yeah nikhil x is one point of the diameter and r is the diameter one point of the diameter means one end point of the diameter what is the one end point of the diameter or we you can right make it clear ah huh, yeah we can fix the midpoint of the diameter uh okay but you are right but uh, just uh, think about it do you need to take such a point midpoint or anything because you are thinking that the diameter may be or no need actually we can take any ah. point x can be any right. point in the set and perfect. radius can be perfect. diameter perfect so so take any point so take any point in a and take r to be this m is it what i'm saying yes yeah but i want this to be subset of uh, open ball is it also fine or if all that i need is some radius so i can take 2m also right yeah some yeah. 2m and now just go through the proof is it fine now what i need to show is that a so for this x and this r which is 2 times m a is subset of this i need to show what is the meaning of saying that if you take any element from a the distance between a and x has to be less than r that's what you need to show but is that immediate so distance so all that you need to check is start with this so distance between a and uh, this x remember i gave, uh, gave x take any x now a is any element in a then i look at this but by the definition it has to be less than diameter of a do you accept this or should i write in between this is going to be less than supremum of all possible distances because one of the element is here this is a particular element and so this has to be this it is given to me that it is less than n and hence it says that this diameter is less than m so this implies but i have taken m is so 2m when i take this is also less than or equal to 2m you can write strictly less than so this a is in dx 2m that it says that now i don't need to take even 2m m will work out this equality is there because it's less than or equal so 2m will do the work for me good now can you also say the other way i'm clearing it up so if i give you this definition that is there exist x and r such that a is subset of bx r from that can you conclude it is bounded by the first definition that means you need to give an m now this time x and r are given you need to tell what is m good keep this picture but this is not the end of the proof of course i gave you some x it is given to me that a is subset of xr so i need to prove that diameter is what yeah uh Indra Jyoti. Yes, sir. Hmm. Sir, uh, we should uh, choose uh, m equals to two r. Is that clear? Sujana, what was your answer? 
uh, m equal to 2r okay okay so so i i leave it for you to check okay check if i take m equal to 2r then i get so if i call this as definition 1 this is definition 2 so it is 1 implying 2 So it is two implying one. So actually, these two are uh, equal in definition. Remember, what you need to check always focus on what you need to prove. Okay, you need to show that distance between any two elements is less than m. If you have done distance between any two elements is less than two r, you are done. But it is given to me that if I take two elements, they are in a. So the distance between a to x is also less than r. Distance between b to x is also less than r. So distance between a to b by triangle inequality has to be less than r plus r, which is 2r. So that's proof is immediate. Okay. So I am looking at a third definition now. I am clearing it up. So the third definition is that for all x in x whatever x if you give then there exist s positive such that my a is subset of b x s okay do you think that this is also definition of boundedness So think of the same picture. Now, what is given to me? So, whatever point if you give, I must be able to put this inside a circle. And this yellow point can be anything. This is an R two. Geometrically, it feels so. then i may be looking at this okay so it doesn't matter what point i am taking it could be any x this could be any x if you want the definition this is do you all accept so which definition which okay so just tell me which which is easy to prove definition 3 implying 1 is easy or 2 is easy if you think it is 1 then say yes definition 3 implies 1 are you able to see the proof good again remember you need to give a diameter so that means what i should tell what is the m can you see what will be the m data has come up uh, data it will be 2s sir ah so the crucial point is distance between a and b is less than or equal to distance between a and some x distance between x and b this is always true whatever x you want to use so when you are proving the definition 2 implies 1 you have chosen that x which i have given now it is saying that any x you can use so i will choose one of the x so it is the same proof only thing is there you don't you have restriction of choosing only that x here now i can choose any x till i can get whatever i want is the proof is done is the proof clear so 3 implies 1 is done What about three implying two? Just a particular case. In fact, I am saying that for every x there is a. So here, third definition says that whatever x if you give, there is an s. But there you have to say that there is an x for which there is an r. So in particular, it is true. So I take one x, and for that x, this s is there. That x I will take. So that's clear. Okay. So. 3 implying 2 is also immediate 
of course one and two are equal and we already done so once i prove three implies one it automatically three is implying two also now uh, which is uh, easier to prove one implying three or two implying three because one and two are equal and now so okay i'll just ask uh, i will not do this completely but i just want to listen to two different people okay indrajyoti what's why you think so sir uh, i think one implies uh, three, three is easy. easy why what is the proof because sir uh, for um, i think that uh, m is given to you yes m is given to me so that uh, we can choose a uh, ball with center zero and radius uh, m and this this can contain that um, set a correct and so that and we can translate this and we can squeeze or uh, we can dilate this so that uh, it is be more easy for me that's what you are thinking but in the, see remember the this idea is okay but you have to clearly tell that if you give me x what is the yes you have to tell okay okay then only it is done right okay think about it okay there is somebody else who said uh, himanshu yeah yes sir ha ah, you thought it is two implies three is easy so like uh, in two we are saying that there exist x and ah. for that x we have a r hmm. so that a is contained in this ball correct correct and but the three, three asks that whatever x if i give you you should be able to get a yes ha huh, so like inside this ball we can find more x like if a is continuous this ball the whatever x like whatever element y will be in x it will be in this ball only mm-hmm. so we can find no, no. remember i am taking x from where note that this is important note that i, I am taking this x is from x oh, oh sorry not from a oh okay that's why i purposely took look at the center of the yellow points okay sir look at this need not be part of the sets okay okay sir yeah yeah namachivayam yes sir and uh, 2 in place 3 is 3 uh, in place 2 is sorry 2 in place 2 is 2 in place 3 is easy yeah yes, we that, can yeah. take x Hmm. So fix y belongs to x. Hmm. There exists x by definition too. We know there exists x such that that happens. Hmm. We take the distance between this y and x hmm. plus that r is given to us. Hmm. We add that, then we will get yeah. x. Is it clear? So maybe you can discuss all that we are saying. See, though the definition is written for every x, I can replace this with. See, this is the things that uh, you should know. I can write the third definition as. For every y in x, there exists yes such that a is subset of ball centered at y of radius s. So what I need to do is that given any y, you should give an s. But the, the second definition says that there is an x. So I will look at what is the distance from y to x, and from uh, that radius r. Both of them together, if I consider together, I may be able to I will be able to cover. Okay. So what is uh, geometric proof? it becoming clumsy but still so if i give you any point say y i know already that ball centered at uh, x of radius r let's look at uh, this uh, smaller yellow circle that is containing that set then what is saying is that you look at the distance from y to x and you also add this distance now if i take this radius and then put a circle okay that's it has to be inserted that's what it says so go through the proof so that's that says that same thing you can do with the other one also and hence these these definitions are all equal so so one so all three definitions are actually uh, equivalent So have we used the fact that there is a there is a vector space? Now I am writing another definition. What it says is that the following. So there exists M such that for every x in Y, 
num of x is less than or equal to n. A is said to be bounded if this happens. If you want to see the proof, just uh, rethink what we are saying. Can you see that it is actually the definition two? In other words, can you see that this is nothing but ball centered at zero of radius m A is contained in this. If, uh, if it is strict inequality is this. It doesn't matter, you can always, or if you want. In fact, nothing special about one. Can you see that this is what it says? There exists M positive such that this happens. That means we have taken the third definition, very specific case when X is the second definition, there exists X now, that is particularly zero. So the third definition, particular case, if I take X equal to zero, then you get an S that says that the A is subset of ball centered at zero of radius S. So that is the S that I'm calling as M plus one. So this says that centered at zero, I can always put this set. Okay, so whatever, whatever may be your set, from center I must be able to, what do I want this circle? Yeah, so this got, This is what it is saying. Okay. So this is a particular case and hence it will also be equivalent to other things. So I am adding and saying that this is also equivalent to the fourth definition. So go through this proof. So we may be using equivalently all these definition uh, the way that we want. So take a couple of minutes to understand all the definitions geometrically at least think in your mind. Good. Okay, so now if you understood the definitions, let's look at some uh, quick examples. And answer me. What are the easiest example for bounded sets? Uh, Arvind, can you give in any nonlinear space which set is bounded? Sorry, uh, could you repeat? In any nonlinear space. Can you give a subset which is bounded? Uh, singleton element. Okay, so right singleton that's element. Can you improve? Uh, what about empty set? Yeah. That's also okay. What about two element sets? Yeah, they would also be. Uh, and then? Um, uh, like countably many if you take countably many maybe how many of you think countably many will be bounded countably many is a bounded set how do you think do you think finite as long as this finite yes yeah finite till me finite subset yes okay so I'll write that so finite subset So finite subset is bounded, okay? Of an anomaly space, of course. We are always discussing subset of an anomaly space. Okay, good. And including uh, empty set also. And what about countable set? How many of you think countable set is bounded? Okay, there are no's, okay. Can you think of an example which is a countable set but it is not bounded? How 
countable set which is not bounded gaurav it is not clear to me what do you mean by no okay so easy answer prachi oh, prachi removed Yeah, so Jana. Natural numbers. Ha. Huh. So in R, you can consider natural numbers as a subset. It's countable, but it is not uh, bounded. Okay, so it's an easy answer. Right. I'm clearing it up. But can you give a class of uh, subsets which are not bounded? Can you think of? or let me ask a specific question what are the natural first uh, natural subsets of vector space subspaces no so what can you say about subspace being bounded can you think of a subspace which is bounded Yeah, Srijana. Singleton zero. Ah, okay. Singleton zero is a subspace which is bounded. Anything else? Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. Ah, uh, nothing else will be. Nothing else will be. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. Can you see that uh, proof also? Ah, uh, yes. So if, if x is there, alpha x should be there. Yeah, if y is subset of x, and if y is y is subset of x in the subspace. Y is a bounded. Note this: it is subspace. Then we want to conclude. Y is actually just single terms. So, as somebody said, this is the other extreme. Okay. So, openness is a kind of this extreme, being full X. and the boundedness is being this extreme it pushes so subspace being bounded is to the other extreme okay sir yeah is it empty set work empty set is it a subspace no oh, no what is your question it's the same empty set is also bounded Empty set is bounded. Yes or no? Look at the definition. There exists a x which is satisfying that. Correct. Look at the definition two. Tata. Look at the definition two. I take any x and any r. And A is your empty set. Can I show that empty set is subset of B X R? Like there is okay. Ah, remember that is why I said that. Yeah, this is subset of anything. Right? Ah, yes, that is true. Remember again, I am emphasizing that we are not looking X in A. Then there is a problem. outside of this is also fine i'm taking any x from out okay so empty set is also uh, bounded since it is a metric space the next notion which is crucial uh, is okay maybe another 2 3 minutes can you think of some other uh, can you think of some other bounded subsets what about uh, ball centered at of uh, some radius and uh, ball centered at some point and radius with some positive radius is it bounded or what i call it as open ball is open ball bounded yes okay i'm asking next question what about closed balls
Yes, that's also bounded. What about uh, finite union of open balls? Right. Similarly, finite union of closed balls. Yes. Right. So you can see that. So think of the plane, but as well as so the plane uh, examples will give you uh, some intuitive idea, but you have to rigorously prove all those whatever you said. Okay. In this case, of course, it is easy. In a metric space, the next typical notion that we look at, you see, open balls we have looked at, closed balls, and how 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 do you create the basis? And we have already looked at uh, what do you mean by bounded? And yesterday we looked at what are the open sets, interior points, a number of things that you have given on uh, two days before, uh, the last but one class. Now I want to look at what about the sequences. Okay. So I call what the same definition. So Xn I, is a sequence in X. Okay. Which means it's a function from natural numbers to elements in X. So I will not write this n equal to one to infinity. I just write bracket with Excel sequence. I want to define the standard notions of what do we mean by convergence. Okay. So this is an element in a sequence in nonlinear space. I want to define what is the notion of convergence. Can you see the definition of convergence immediately? So I say that Xn converges to X if for every epsilon positive there exists a natural number n such that for all n bigger than or equal to n, what do we want? In the case of real numbers, you will say that uh, xn minus x is, that means xn minus x, that's the distance in the real case. Now here we have norm, so we can ask this norm of xn minus x is. That's all, so that's the natural definition. Now can you also define what is Cauchy sequence? So the sequence Xn is Cauchy if the same. So for every epsilon positive, there exists again natural number. So that if I take numbers bigger than this, I want Xn minus Xn. This I want it to be less than epsilon. Remember, I can always write this in terms of the metric. Remember, I'm writing finally in the metric definition. I can write the distance between. So just to make sure that this is actually distance between Xn and X. That your typical definition of I'll ask one question and then think about and answer this. We have already uh, know something. So if Xn converges to X, can I say something about the following? So if, if Xn converges to X, this is the definition now. What can you say about this? Any connection between norm Xn and norm X? How many of you could guess? Yeah, Guru Prasad. Answer. Yeah. Norm of norm of x minus xn minus norm x is less than or equal to the term. Yeah, norm. Next term. This, minus, minus. this is. Ah, uh, this is. Uh, this, that is less than or equal to. Uh. Xn minus x norm. Yes. So, what is the conclusion? 
if x n converges to x with respect uh-huh. to that norm member norm uh-huh. then uh, norm x n converges to norm x right so this shows that if x n converges to x so look at uh, this so the above thing says that then norm x n converges to norm x so obvious next question so what is the next question can you think yeah gaurav uh, is converse also true uh, is converse is the converse true what's your answer yes yes Yes. So many of you think it is true. So when such cases comes, at least go back to the simplest example that you can think of, and then see whether it works out. So the simplest norm that we know is the modulus. So can I conclude from that? so if the modulus of a n converges to some modulus of a does it mean that a n should converge to a okay so many of you are saying no so get the counter example it's easy okay at least in the r itself it is not true so so in general the converse is not true this may be a kind of test to say that it is converging or not converging in terms of it is going to help only if norm x n does not converge to norm x then i can conclude xn will not converge so it's a test of saying it is not converge we can use that but for proving that xn converges to yes, x i cannot use it can i replace this what i have written on the left hand side as this you all accept that is the meaning of saying that right so if norm of xn minus x converges to zero doesn't mean that norm of xn converges to norm x so you should keep that in mind how do you prove this by the way you think it is true so you have given this proof so there is one proof which guru prasad has given and can you also think another proof where i use the fact that norm is a continuous function so once you know this fact that see if x n converges to x f of x n should converge to f of x if f is a continuous function we have already proved norm is a continuous function so you can conclude that and remember the norm continuous you have proved this inequality only the above inequality right how do i manage them or how do i operate them is there any interaction among them so that's the kind of question what can you say about x n plus y n if i know that x n converges to x and y n converges to y can i conclude something similarly if x n converges to x what about alpha times x n so do you get the proof immediately so first you have to guess where it will converge so where xn plus yn will converge to x plus y so this same place this so this will converge to alpha times x so how do i prove such things to show that this converges i will go by definition so i will start with norm of uh, xn plus yn minus x plus y and uh, i will use the triangle inequality norm of xn minus x separately plus norm of yn minus y and each of them can be made less than epsilon if you go by epsilon definition or sequential proof converging to zero also so i could get this similarly the other one if i subtract one from the other it is modulus of alpha times so is the alpha has to be non zero or zero is also fine does the second one works out for any alpha yeah 
right even if alpha is zero it's like zero converging to zero that's true only good so this is also true i'm saying a statement try to understand if xn converges to x and f is continuous then f of xn converges to f of x that's given that is that you know now i'm asking the other question suppose if a function takes converging sequence to converging sequence does it imply that the function is continuous inside a metric space right so if you know that result what is this two statements are making here what is that i can conclude from this atanu yes sir yeah so what is this saying so it is saying that if at all you have xn converges to x and yn converges to y then xn plus yn converges to x plus y so addition is uh, can you see that this plus is continuous it actually says that the plus because whatever convergent sequence if you take this is happen but plus is a function from where to where addition is a function from yes correct x cross x to x okay similarly this also says that the scalar multiple is continuous but this is a map from k cross x to x but before going further i need to make sure that what do you mean by continuous here what is the metric on x and the co domain that is clear what is the metric atanu for the plus function that is domain is x cross x and co domain is x so to speak continuity you need some topology or some metric right now i know that x is a non linear space and hence clearly co domain has a metric what is the metric so i can take uh, uh, co domain co domain what is the metric co domain is uh, same that the norm metric. yeah co domain is the metric that is coming from the norm so what is uh, metric on domain uh, i think minimum of d1 and d2 okay so the question is what is the norm on on x cross x so it would be uh, that if you take two things like x1 y1 and x2 y2 ha huh. huh. so norm of x1 mm -hmm. okay. so i need to give you it is every element is of the form some x comma y okay you want to use x1 y1 it's okay okay your x1 x2 yeah so, this norm is Uh, norm of x1 plus yes. norm of x2. So this is a norm. Is this a norm? Yeah. If you could uh, recollect uh, the question which Indra Jyoti asked, possibly the second discussion. This is what we said. This is like using one. Can you also, Andhra Jyoti? Do you remember some other name? Can you give? Yes, sir. Um, uh, Super norms in the maximum of um, mod x and mod x two. Yeah. I can take maximum. And not only that, I can define any p norm. Do you remember? Yeah, Indra Jyoti, can you tell what is that defined? So, with the help of coefficients, we can define. I think. No, I can take this itself. Okay, okay, okay. Here, yes, sir. Yes, sir. One is anyway included already. So, I can do this. So there are plenty of norms. So, uh, 
so i am saying that this function is continuous with respect to which norm on the domain i am saying that this plus is continuous or which is easy for you to see try it out this too must be easy for you to check it out very immediately okay and in fact uh, soon we will say that it doesn't matter which norm you use uh, with all of them it is going to be uh, continuous and what about the scalar multiple can you see what is the k itself is a vector space i can understand as a field and what is the norm modulus is the norm and so it's nothing special about x cross x if it is x cross y also take the norm in x in the first coordinate take the norm in norm of y in the second coordinate and you can go for it so the same thing can be defined anywhere plus and dot are continuous with respect to the one norm and infinite norm at least this you can should check and that will also tell you how to go about doing uh, other norms also so the plus is continuous so addition is continuous and scalar multiple is also continuous and your norm is also continuous so i i at least the moment you say a norm linear space there are at least three functions which immediately we have continuity are you familiar with completeness a metric space is said to be complete if every cauchy sequence converges okay so most of you know and hence in the case of norm linear space also if that happens if every cauchy sequence in x converges then then the norm linear space x is also called is called complete norm linear space okay another name for this space is what is called banach space so if every cauchy sequence converges inside a norm linear space then that space is called banach space so it's a complete norm linear space stefan banach has uh, worked out a lot of these spaces and their properties studied a lot of things so they have given name for these spaces as banach space this is an open ball and this is the closed ball what is the obvious connection between these two sets is a closed ball this is an open ball obvious connection is inclusion you right what about this this is immediate if i have the following information that if pxr is a closed set then this inclusion is immediate because what is the closure of bxr it is the smallest closed set containing the open ball bxr and dxr is some closed set okay centered at x of radius r This is a closed set, which is all anyway containing Bx. So smallest closed set has to be subset of the closed set containing Bx. This closed set. So for that, first of all, I need to know is this Bx are closed. So is this so is is this closed? since we have the definition of uh, sequences now so inside a metric space if i want to prove the closeness and like and like uh, topological space where you need to prove its complement is open or something else now we can ask uh, sequential definition can be used if xn converges to x then does it imply that px is also part of this so if i start a sequence inside bxr and if it is converging i need to prove that the limit point is also inside can you see the proof so if x and converges to x yeah atanu yeah what's the proof if X and converges to X. That means hmm. norm of X converging to norm X. 
and mm. we know that uh, okay, it's B X R, so we can translate like take uh, X plus uh, B zero R, mm -hmm. like that. So norm. Uh, so basically, I'm trying to say if it's mm. uh, that norm of X n is less or equal to something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. The, okay, so okay, we can take okay. So norm let of me. X n minus X. Okay, so first of all, to avoid your difficulty, all that I, all that you are saying is the following. Shall I consider this? Yes. Does it make your life easy? Yes. Yeah. That now go ahead. So ah. that means uh, norm of X n is less or equal to R. Yes. So since uh, X n mm. is converging to X, uh, yeah. So that means norm of X n is converging to norm X. That hmm. means norm of X is also less or equal to R. So do you know this fact? So if uh, X n converges to X, and if X n is less than or equal to real numbers case at least, if X n converges positive real numbers, let's say if X n are less than or equal to R, yes. and if X n converges to X, then yes. X also because, the limit point also has, yeah because yes. in R in R minus infinity to uh, R post is a post set. Mm -hmm. So that means we are taking norm of X n converting to norm of X. Mm -hmm. So their post means complete in R. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. basically that will mean uh, that uh, norm of X less or equal to R. No, no, but the point is that from where do you get that norm x is also less than or equal to r? That uh, minus infinity to r capital R is mm -hmm. a post in capital R, like real number. Hmm. Is that clear? Okay, so just check that. So use that fact to conclude. Be close, be a closed, uh, closed ball centered at zero of radius r is closed. And once this is closed, Look at this B closed XR. What is this? This is actually X plus this set. We have already proved the translation of any closed set is also closed. So you get this is also a closed set. Okay. Okay, now I'll... So what remains to check for you is that this is clear. This is a closed set. So this inclusion is clear. But what we want to say is that the other way is also true. In fact, is actually this. Okay. Is this true in general metric space? Is the closure of the open ball is same as the closed ball in a metric space? Mm -hmm. no? Yeah, is it true? In general metric space. Yeah. yeah. True? Yes. So what is uh, no, 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 no. VXR in discrete metric? So no, no, no. Bx1. So in the case of discrete metric, tenets. if it, ha, huh, it will be single tenets. But what is B close to x1? That would be uh, x. Okay. x space. Space. Another element. Okay. So it's not so true in the case of metric space. Okay. So this statement is not true in mental metric space. But something special happens in the case of. Uh, non-linear space. So it's nice. The closure of the open ball is just the closed ball. So which is uh, kind of very good relief. We don't need to worry very seriously. If you don't know this discrete metric, so spend some time and understand. Okay. Mm -hmm.